When the communication goes beyond the document to the lecture delivery, there are some best practices that relate to the perceivable and understandable principles of universal accessibility guidelines. Whether a lecture is being recorded or delivered face-to-face, -face, it's important that the presenter speak clearly and directly to their audience. In addition, explain anything that isn't common nomenclature for your audience. It is helpful to spell out acronyms the first time they are used as well. For the same reason digital images receive alternative text in a document, it's important that the presentation audibly describes the content of any graphics whose context is pertinent to the lecture. When coming across a complex equation, chart, graph, or other visual display, it's important that the presenter break it down so that its complexity does not detract from the experience. Consider the prior knowledge of the audience, possible cognitive barriers, and also the variety of ways a participant might actually see the display. This could include the individual who is relying entirely on audio or transcript, or perhaps may only be able to focus on one part of a magnified video or still image at a time. Another thing the presenter will want to talk the audience through is any annotations that may be happening. For instance, if there is a whiteboard type activity, make certain to describe any background visuals, but also describe what is being highlighted, modified, or otherwise annotated. If the tool that is selected for annotations is important, make certain to describe the tool or its type of annotation as well. For example, quote, on this scatter plot of the correlation of infant mortality rate and total fertility, we are crossing out the outliers with a red X before drawing an estimated line of best fit with the yellow highlighter." Unquote. All graphics that are included in a live or a recorded lecture should be incorporated with the same thought that goes into the best practices for documents. Make sure to not rely on color alone as an identifier. If there's a line graph, Differentiate the lines by thickness, dots or dashes, markers, etc. If there's a map, make sure there are clearly defined borders between regions. If there is text displayed that needs to be emphasized, emphasize it by varying the font decoration, for instance bold, italics or underlining, and not just color. If there is text that is part of an image and it's supposed to be read by the audience, make certain that the text is clear and easy to read as well as having a sufficient contrast ratio with its background. Avoid animated graphics in your presentation since the success criteria and guidelines for any of these is very precise. In addition to making sure the visual elements of your lecture are perceivable to individuals with varying levels of sight, you want to make sure that an even larger group of people come to know what content is being displayed in your lecture. This means you should at least state a brief description in referencing graphics that are not purely decorative. In addition, make sure to relay the key points of the image. If there is text that participants are expected to read, verbalize it. And if there's part of the image that should be receiving the focus, Draw the participant's attention to this by stating where they should look. And, for those who may not be able to see, describe the key details as you continue your lecture. For communication and collaboration that happens in real time, either face-to-face -face or online, such as instant messaging or chat rooms and video conferencing, there are a few more best practices that can be incorporated in addition to those we've discussed for lecture delivery. The first is that before the activity, all participants should be provided with instructions or links to any help files or accessibility alternatives and statements specific to any technologies that may be used. This notification could be posted through a course announcement, such as what might appear on a course website or a distributed email. In an academic course, this notification regarding accessibility statements and help files would also be appropriate in a syllabus. During an activity where communication is encouraged, make certain to designate a universal method for participants to alert others that they have something to say or contribute. For example, inside of a digital platform there may be a tool or keyboard shortcut that serves as a raised hand in a traditional classroom setting. This is particularly important in a fast-paced environment where there may be several individuals vying for attention at the same time, or there may be those whose communication is delayed for some reason. For example, an individual with limited digital dexterity may be using something other than a keyboard or speech to input their text. With a simpler method to let others know they've got something to say, the time it takes them to input their contribution is not as discouraging.
Lastly, try to save and make available an archived recording of the session for all participants. There may be individuals who participated, but for a variety of reasons were unable to fully comprehend the activity and its related discussion. For digital or virtual activities, there is the added barrier that connectivity interruptions sometimes happen. Allowing access to the archived recording helps individuals in either group as well as individuals whose learning experience may be reinforced by the on-demand replay of sorts. Making a practice of presenting and authoring content with accessibility in mind will get easier and eventually turn into a positive habit. Right now, you will probably need to be conscientious of employing the techniques we've identified and reviewed here. As you do, remember the goal of better for all while recalling the WCAG poor principles, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust, and the UDL principles, multiple means of engagement, representation, and expression or activity. Soon the methods will be native to your design and delivery and 100% of your energy will be back to the core content and its goals with these best practices having turned into your practices. Remember, when you develop your resources, consider all users' experiences from a variety of perspectives. Build and deliver content and communications that avoid being barriers. Create a social model that is welcoming and inclusive for as many individuals as possible. In doing so, remember to think about how your content and delivery will translate to users who may have varied abilities and some may even rely on assistive technologies. But don't be too concerned with the actual tools that may be used. Simply follow the spirit of the WCAG principles and success criteria and the guesswork is done for you. And remember that you are developing sustainable, healthy habits that will help you to avoid future rework and to keep up with evolving technologies.